Welcome to the Dating Kinky Podcast, a cast about love, sex, romance, and kink. A few days back, I was chatting with someone about sexuality, and the subject of foreplay came up. I realized that I'd had a writing nearly done, like 90% written, about the topics of foreplay and aftercare, but that although I'd moved it to my done folder, I hadn't yet made any additional moves towards getting it posted. And I finally realized why. It wasn't actually done. (laughs) It was missing a part that my brain finally brought out in conversation. And now I have it. So today I'm talking about how I view foreplay and aftercare and what they are to me. I'm not telling you what they must be to you, maybe what they could be if you like the idea, but no more than that. Just sharing my thoughts and giving you a deeper peek into how I live my life in sex and kink. Foreplay and aftercare are far more than they seem to me. I recently saw a post on Facebook with a screen capture of the following by Variant Works. I've seen people argue that BDSM and kink is bad because of aftercare. You don't need aftercare and safe words for vanilla sex because it's not harmful. Uh, hate to tell you, but aftercare and safe words do exist for vanilla sex. It's getting your partner a glass of water after. It's cuddling and compliments. It's asking if they're feeling good during. It's words like stop, no, easy. It's asking if there's anything to make it better next time. If you don't really practice communicating in aftercare with your partner, regardless of how vanilla it is or not, you're just not a good partner. Hashtag well. 100% agree. And... That made me think about what aftercare is and reminded me of my personal thoughts about foreplay as well. Aftercare and foreplay make sense in situations when you are really connecting outside of other life stuff. Like, if you're not in regular contact, those are the before sex kink play and the after sex kink play parts that should be paid attention to. But they are so much more than that for me. And that quote touches on that. Let's talk foreplay. What sets it apart from sex? To me, foreplay is all of the touching and affection and teasing and innuendo and life that leads up to the sex or kink play. All of it. Not just the 15 minutes of inexpert fumbling it takes for you to get your nerve together. It's a lifestyle. It's maintaining the connection and heating things up whenever. In fact, I think anything can be foreplay or sex based on where you are and where it takes you in the process. All of it is sex if you're heading towards sex It's all foreplay to me if it's over time with no intention of making sex or kinky play happen within a reasonable amount of time. Like, Peck came up to give me a kiss this morning. He was shirt cocking, so I tickled his balls as he kissed me deeply before he went up to work. Foreplay, because neither of us were planning to have sex or kinky play right now. It's just play ahead of the warm-up to the main event. We'll probably do that all day long in preparation for a date night this evening. Then, eventually, we'll have our sexy time. Foreplay is constant for me. And for many people, without that regular interaction, the actual foreplay that most people do doesn't really get them that far. Or isn't all that interesting because they're not even ready for traditional foreplay without a deep connection simmering all the time. So what about aftercare? Well, that to me is the bedrock of loving someone 
wanting to make sure they are happy and healthy and in a good place. Yes, after something super intense, it's more. Just like foreplay gets hotter and heavier the closer to the actual event. But does it ever really go away? To me, no. It's just, this is how I love my partner. Or, this is how I show a playmate that I care. Do I always do aftercare? No. Because it's not always negotiated. Because it's not always needed. Because I rarely play with someone outside of my usual connected partners. And when I do, it's often with people who are already well partnered. And I hand them back into exactly that kind of care in their lives. But if and when I were to play with someone and those terms don't apply, well then, yes, aftercare is the immediate after bits. It's also, though, the check-ins over days about how they're doing. Small talk, giving them the chance to bring up anything they might want or need to. And just being there. Now, I know that I'm playing fast and loose with the words here. The definitions are way more specific than how I think of the terms. And I expect most people will disagree with me. That said, the official definition of aftercare is medical, not kinky recreational. (laughs) That's okay. This is about me personally and how I live these words in my own life. And maybe someone you know, or even you, will resonate with this view. What are your thoughts? Are foreplay and aftercare discrete, separate stages of time set aside for sexuality or kink for you? Or do you find that you prefer to blend them more fully into your life and twist them around each other and even around non-sexual or non-kinky bits. Thank you for joining me today. If you love this episode, please share it with others who would enjoy it. And please do join me on our new apps available in the Google Play and Apple App Stores. Dating Kinky is built by kinksters for kinksters, poly, queer, trans folk, and anyone not quite vanilla. And it's free. Find me on FetLife as Nookie Notes and on Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, and Medium as Dating Kinky. We are on Instagram as Dating Kinky Official, all one word. Also, find me on the new Moan app in beta for iPhone. I'm Miss Nookie there. T-H-E-M-O-N-A-P-P dot com. Have a kinky day, and I'll catch you next episode.